Well, thanks so much for tuning into the trade setup with Neeraj Shah. It's a, it's a, it's a three-day uh, weekend that we had, and we're coming post that. So there are lots of newsmakers. It'll be slightly long trade setup. Bear with me. Let's take stock of the global news flow first. S&P 500 has raced towards the 30th all-time high of 2024. Every single day, this tends to do it, and again, driven by tech. No surprise there. India's stock value has topped 5 trillion as well as uh, Prime Minister Modi's win has powered the rally for Indian stock markets as well. Remember, we had a very good close in Friday's session. We closed above that crucial mark, and I'll come to that in a moment as well, which we were failing to do for the last two or three sessions, so that is great. Hyundai India has filed the IPO. That could be the biggest in India's history. Ex-Trump advisor has urged him to cut ties with China, restart nuclear tests. Now, this is going to be a very interesting while we were all rightfully so obsessed with our elections. The, the big election in the world is also coming up in November. And I think in the run-up to that, there will be a lot of to and fro's uh, that the world will take notice of. So keep an eye out for this as well. And um, you know, the other interesting thing, um, as we saw, and if you were not living under a rock, you would have seen this. If you are even remotely a cricket fan, Lockie Ferguson, the bowler from New Zealand, created an incredible 2020 record in a clash against PNG. The record is this, four overs, four maidens, and three wickets. Uh, three wickets is also great, I'm just saying, but all four overs were maidens. I don't think any bowler has done this in T20s. That's quite something. Really, this World Cup is turning out to be a bowler's dream, and it's so good to know. NHS, moving on to markets. Like I said, NASDAQ was the key mover, 1.24% higher. Asia is powering ahead as well as a result of what happened in the US market. So great going there too. And Indian markets, the SGX Nifty, or the GIFT Nifty, excuse me. <laughs> Sometimes it just comes out, pointing towards the start, which is in the green, 106.85. Now, you know, the trade last week kind of gave indications of that. Because if you look at what happened last week, frankly, one, the Nifty closed above the 23,400 level after failing in the previous three sessions, so which was a good thing. VIX went down for each of the five days. And the FPI long short ratio has gone up quite substantially now to 46% as the end of Thursday, by the way, the data that is available versus 41% earlier. So FPI is on the futures are long. Even if the cash market selling is happening on the derivative side, they are certainly long. 234465 currently for the Nifty. Let's see if we do well. Will we do well? Well, I think the momentum is evident by the leaderboard. Look, look at that. The leaderboard had micro caps doing well, real estate, PSUs. All of them leading the rally, which tells you a story about what's the nature of the move that is happening. Now, what could spoil the move today for themselves is pharma. It's going to be likely losing in trade post the American pricing data. And I'll come to the city note, which lays this out, by the way. Pharma will take a slam dunk in the session today. But what will do well? Gas related stocks are doing really well. Look at breakout moves in. Gujarat gas, Indrapasta gas, Petron and LNG. So that pocket is doing well. So keep an eye out for that pocket. And keep an eye out for some of the um, stocks in which there is an earnings promise. I think this, there are strong moves in expensive stocks. And by expensive, I don't mean the ticket price. By expensive, I mean the P multiples. And because those stocks are moving, you know that the market is betting on them because the market believes that growth out there is guaranteed. So just look at the kind of moves that happened in Friday in an SKF. 12%, ABB 7%, Trent 4.5%, Varun Beverage is 3.5%. These are really expensive stocks. Each of these would be northwards of 70 times P multiple for sure. At certain cases, might be even more than 100. But because they've come out with a strong quarter, they are promising growth, the market is betting on those, which is actually, well, something that the market is telling you that we do not want to buy value. Right now, the market is in the mood for rewarding growth. Bear that in mind from a trade perspective. Now, stocks to watch. Like I said, pharma, I'm starting off with the bad news, then we'll go on to the good news. Now, the city note on pharma, and there are other notes like Jefferies as well saying the same thing, but I've used the city note. They say that the latest trends show a sharp double-digit decline in April to June uh, 24 in terms of pricing. 80% of products, according to city of Aurobindo, Sipla, Dr. Eddie's Lupin, may see double-digit decline in pricing. By the way, we, I think we missed out the pricing word, but it is pricing essentially which has come off. They've introduced a downside 90-day uh, catalyst watch for Aurobindo and Dr. Eddie's. They have removed Sipla from the preferred picks, and they say while Lupin may surprise negatively, and while Lupin may have this Mirbetric launch, 
which may mask the few weaknesses that may come in, but it will surprise negatively. And they prefer non-US heavy names like Torrent and Sun Pharma, which have gotten India exposure and the India business is doing well. But mind you, because of this news, and I suspect Pharma will come off today, it will also drag some of the others. It will also drag the CDMO players, it will drag some of the other. I reckon Pharma as a bucket will be the top loser in the session today. Then, um, HOEC could be positive today. Uh, the export flow line for two wells, which is D1 and D2, have been cleaned up and the wells have been lined up for production. Post this, uh, the oil production is up at 1300 barrels per day versus 914 barrels per day in Q4. And gas production is at 6 MMS CMD, million metric cubes, uh, that's the metric, 6 MMS CMD versus 4.45 in Q4. So you see both for oil and gas, because of the wells being operational, the production has gone up by over 30% in both cases. I reckon they should be very positive for the stock, should react positively today, watch out for this one. Also, HFCL could react positively today. EU has commissioned, the EU commission has said that the company is not engaged in dumping of opt optical fiber cables, optic fiber cables in the EU markets. Uh, this is as per a release of the company, by the way. And they, the release also says that there is a provisional anti-dumping duty determined on all other optic fiber ma cable manufacturers except for HFCL. Now the stock was up 5% already because this is an announcement made on the 14th, all right? But uh, because it has come in maybe post-market hours, you'll probably see a further reaction in HFCL in the session today. Mind you, this is as per the company release. We haven't gone out and checked the EU release, but I would trust that the company on a BSC release, if they're saying that, it is true. So watch out for HFCL, could be positive today. This one could be taken to the cleaners. Police are investigating some distilleries over allegations of employing children in their factory. Now, this is a news that has done all the rounds, all general news channels rounds as well. Very likely some distilleries could correct. Now remember, I'll just rail out a small disclaimer. We haven't heard from the company. We've placed a request with the company. The company has to get back to us. The company probably will give us an interview. They will sell, they will mention their, their side of the story. We I believe that the stock will correct today on the basis of this piece of news, which is not wherein we have not heard from the company's side. Uh, but be that as it may, I think that the stock will correct today because of this. So let's wait and watch for some distilleries as well. Paras Defense was up 20%. The reason, now known, Abu Dhabi Investment Authority, Adia, has bought 5.6 lakh shares at 1120.71 apiece. Watch out for Paras, will react positively today. It was up 20%, I think it could do more today. Adani Enterprises, promoters have increased stake in the company to 73.95 from 71.93. And uh, promoters have acquired this 2.2% stake in the company between September 23 to June 2024. Very likely could react positively. Very likely Adani Ports could react positively. Certain media articles say that the company has gotten a green nod for 45,000 crore Mundra expansion. Now, standard disclaimer, both of these belong to the Adani Group. The Adani Group owns NDTV. You're watching this my broadcast on the NDTV profit social media handle, but uh, very likely that the stocks could react positively, so I had to bring them up as well. Uh, the NDTV, uh, the Adani Ports uh, is, uh, official announcement is not known on the exchanges, it is from a newspaper article that I've borrowed. Uh, windfall tax, maybe some of the stocks could react, usually they don't react too much, but I brought it up nevertheless. Watch out for some more small stocks, uh, actually no, TCS is a large one, has been penalized by the US court for trade secret misappropriation, Maybe TCS reacts negatively while Infosys, because of a couple of brokerage notes, might react positively. Uh, so watch out for that one. I haven't mentioned, okay, let's first talk about what I've mentioned. Pasalo Digital Promoter, equilib uh, Equilibrated Venture, Seaflow has bought about 32 lakh shares on June 14th. Maybe Pasalo reacts positively. Um, I would mention Zomato and Paytm. Uh, Paytm certainly could react positively both because both companies have said that they are in talks for a potential transaction, so watch out for those as well. Um, and um, watch out for m and uh, because there is a, a, a Nuama note on m and they've retained the buy, the target price has been raised to 3500 from 2760. This is after the Mahindra and Mahindra Analyst Day. 
Most brokerages have sounded constructive on uh, m and because of multiple reasons. Nuama has raised the EPS estimates on company's growth aspiration of 15 to 20%. So uh, this, the company's planned a capex of 37,000 crores over FY25 to 27, while retaining 18% ROE. All of this, by the way, Anish has told me in an interview, you can YouTube or, or, or on YouTube, on our website, on any of the social media handle, hunt for that interview. But I think Anish has spoken about all of this. This is a big one as well. 22 launches by 2030, it becomes a full bouquet SUV provider across EV and non-EV vehicles as well. And the global tractor share will be raised as well. And the GEMS portfolio, the smaller businesses, they retain the target of 5x in five years. So watch out for m and I think there is a great thing. And this is not an m and piece. Sorry, this is not an m and piece. But you know, so many people worry about whether we should get out of the market or no. I think the market is looking so strong right now that what might actually make sense is riding this bull market with a proper risk management framework in place as opposed to thinking the market has run up too much, let me book profits. Ride the bull market, keep risk reward in place, keep proper risk management in place, that might actually be better because you could have gotten, of the market, gotten out of the market at 22,000 and you would be ruining the last 1,500 point uptick as well. So maybe do this. It's not a Nuama note. It's something that I read somewhere. I just thought I'll bring it to you. Thanks so much for tuning into the trade setup.